We talk South Carolina football here at the Voice of College Football. When we do that, you got to bring on Chris Phillips from the Source Up Show. Chris, how you doing today? Mark, I'm doing well. I appreciate you having me. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. And uh, yeah, as we uh, navigate through the end of baseball season and we creep slowly into the quote unquote dead period, if you will, it's it's always great. Down the days, man. It's it's crazy. Thursday of this week is actually 100 days until SEC football kicks off when Vandy takes on Hawaii. And then a week from Thursday, we'll begin our countdown 100 days until South Carolina football. So it'll be here before you know it. But, man, it's always a pleasure to chat with you, and I really do appreciate you having me on. Chris, you had to bring up Vandy. And as soon as you did, and you brought that Hawaii game up because somebody, a a caller, called in last night, and they were uh, throwing over-under wind totals at me. Mm -hmm. We got to Vandy. And I was guessing the win totals, and I was within a half a win on everybody in terms of what Vegas was projecting. Vandy, I thought, I haven't looked at the schedule, but they got to be at three. No, one and a half for Vandy. Wow. And I looked at the schedule and saw, yeah, they're going to Hawaii, and then they're coming back for Elon, and then they got Wake Forest, and yeah, uh, Northern Illinois on the road. Now, who from the SEC would travel to Northern Illinois for a game? But <sighs> Vandy. One and a half, really. That does One feel- and a half. I, you know, what's crazy, I kind of like what Clark Lee is doing. I, I don't know if yep. maybe I'm biased and I want to give Vandy credit because they mm-hmm. nearly beat South Carolina last year, but yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think Clark Lee is doing a terrible job, and we all know that's a a really tough job. I mean, what James Franklin did there was incredible, but I, I think Lee is actually doing some good things. I've seen them pull some guys in recruiting. I mean, where they, you know, I don't know exactly where they finished, but I think, wasn't it, like, top 40? Like, they had a they had a pretty good class, so I, I mean – so. I don't know. I, yeah. I think I think I'd be putting money on a, on Vandy to hit the over there. Okay. All right. Let's bring it back home. <laughs> we'll, we'll go uh, before I hit you with South Carolina. There's been a lot of talk, uh, Chris, this week, as you will know, around college football concerning the structuring of the conferences. Mm-hmm. You know, should the one two seeds be playing in the championship game? Should we disband divisions? Where do you stand on that? Oh, pods versus divisions. Um. And that's where I really start with it and weigh out the pros and the cons. Because on one hand, the pod structure. It's like, why would we go to a pod structure? And I understand why you would from the entertainment value side. And I know people, you know, the the old school, the old heads are going to hate this because it's, it's a participation trophy type of thought process. But when you think about it, right, there's never been more options for entertainment than there are in 2022. I mean, heck, we're seeing it right now with with college football attendances declining across board. I couldn't believe attendance was down last year coming off of COVID. I know some people maybe were still scared off from going and inflation's happening and all that. But I think something that also happens is this. There is this win or bust mentality. And we've adopted for some weird reason, Mark, this mentality of, If you don't win at all, if you're not one of the four in the playoff, well, then you sucked. You just had a bad year. If you go eight and four, ah, that team sucks. And it's like, no, they're actually a really good team. Yeah. The the reason, right. But it's like the reason, you know, the playoff exists. It's not like you're just either elite or you're terrible. It's like there's a lot of wiggle room in between. But because what the playoff has done, and ESPN has marketed to, You know, who's in? And it's all about the playoff. Well, if their team's not in, fan bases are losing interest halfway through the year. And and I'm not saying that's happening. You know, fans are going to, you know, the diehards are going to continue to show up no matter what. But you are seeing fan interest wane, I think, a little bit. Because, again, like, I even look at South Carolina. It's like, why were there some people last year that were saying seven and six was a bad year? It's because – it's this championship or bust mentality. So when you bring the pods in, Mark, at least what you do with that scenario and that setup and that structure, you're giving more teams more to play for longer, right? You're going to be more invested if you feel like your team going into week 10, 11, 12 has a chance to win their pod versus if you have two divisions and it's eight teams per division. By the halfway point, you're out of it. But there's a lot of teams, most of them are going to be out of it by the halfway point. So if you're looking at it purely from the entertainment value, I think pods are beneficial. I don't think it's going to help you reach a champion. I don't think it's even like I look at the, and I talked about this on my show the other day, the college football playoff. And this exact same point of why we should expand beyond four teams. Because now you've opened Pandora's box. You can't go back to the BCS, which I don't think looking back, we're like, you know what? 
DCS didn't do that bad of a job. I think most of the time they got it right. Most of the time we got the number one team. And I see you <laughs> grimacing. And, and I'm not saying I want to go back to it. I'm just saying that. We're, we're going to save that conversation, Chris. Right, right. I, I'm just <laughs> saying that it feels like you could expand the playoff to 8, to 12, to 16. It's like we're still ending up with Bama and Clemson. We're still ending up with Bama and Georgia. We're still ending up with some combo of Bama, Georgia, Clemson, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Oregon, somebody else, okay? But it's the entertainment value side. College ball is a business. They got to keep people invested as long as they can. So I, I, I would almost turn it back on you or I'd turn it on anyone. I'm not opposed to the pods, but I think the real reason for doing that is just to give at least the feeling to more teams that they have a chance. And again, I, I hate the, you know, it's not a participation trophy type thing, but is it if it's just SEC championship or bust, there's like three fan bases that are, that are going to be locked in on that. Because then you add in Texas, Oklahoma, you know, 90% of the teams are playing for, for nothing if, if, if it's all just weighed on winning a title. So, you know, I, I don't know if I have one preference or the other because on the, on the division side of things, I'm like, well, just get better. I, I mean, if you, if you want to have more reason to be invested, just get better. But from the business side, which I think is the way you got to look at it, I think the pods make sense because when you get to a point where you have 16 teams, it feels like you need to, and I, and I think what's cool too about the pods is the way you could do the scheduling. I think that would be awesome. Getting to rotate more of these different types of games. I, I think you obviously got to have some permanent games that you play. Like, you know, I want to see South Carolina, Georgia play every year. I want to see Georgia, Tennessee play every year. I want to see Florida, Georgia play every year, but you know, why is South Carolina only seeing LSU once every, like, decade? Or Bama? Once it, it feels like we're never playing these teams. So getting those more unique matchups is cool. But, you know, I, I would probably side when you add Texas and OU to the pod side of things just simply for the entertainment value because you can't just have people checking out halfway through the season. Got Chris Phillips on the line talking up South Carolina on uh, the Spurs Up show. Catch him right there. Uh, Chris, let people know where they can find you. Yeah, so we're on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at the Spurs Up Show. Um, any social media you have that we're going to be there, at the Spurs Up Show. You can find our podcast, which drops Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, you can find that on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, anywhere you listen to podcasts, you can find us. Uh, we're also on YouTube, the Spurs Up Show. And uh, also, I do a daily live show Monday through Friday that airs on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Again, that's all under the Spurs Up Show. And, uh, yeah, it runs Monday through Friday, noon to 2. We take questions, comments, calls, just like we're doing here. And I, you know, take all the comments and calls and stuff like that. Sort of a South kind of version of, uh, of Paul Feinbaum, I feel like, where the callers really are the stars of the show. But nice. uh, we're also at thespursupshow.com. So literally anywhere you consume any sort of content information, the Spurs Up show is going to be there. Just to cap off the scheduling portion of it, I never really understood. And the ACC and, of course, the SEC, they do it the same way. Mm -hmm. You play everyone in your division. You've got – two seven-team divisions, and you rotate uh, the other game in the other division while you have one dedicated rival from the other division. So what I don't like about that situation is there are legitimate cross-division rivalries. Alabama-Tennessee, they want to hook them together. Georgia-Auburn, the South's, Deep South's oldest rivalry. South Carolina and Texas A&M. I don't. I can't think of two schools in the SEC that have less to do with each other than why. Why do you have to? Why do you have to have a rival for everyone? Why don't you just pretend? Did you know? Did you know there's Alabama, a trophy Tennessee for that? Georgia, game. Auburn, and maybe yeah. LSU and Florida, and let the other ones yeah. play more often. Oh, trust me, we're we're as tired of playing Texas A and M as you are us playing them. I, I trust me. I, did you know there's a trophy for that game? By the way, the Bonham Trophy, which. South Carolina fans, we don't know it exists because we've never beaten Texas A&M. So we have no idea. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a matchup that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I still feel like A&M, maybe A&M gets away with it because they bring a lot in the conference, but like a Mizzou, it still feels weird they're an SEC team to me. Yeah. Um, and I know their fans hate that <laughs> because they are treated as like the redheaded stepchild. Yeah. But um, – yeah, I mean, I you know, we, we don't – listen, we don't love the, the A&M game either. <laughs> I mean, just to be totally transparent and totally honest, we don't like the A&M game either. So there's definitely cross-division rivalries, Mark, that, that I think you have to keep that make a lot of sense. But you are right. There's some of them that just they, – they don't fit for whatever reason. I, I just – I think it just takes common sense. You know, we don't need stats or records. It's just like that game does not make sense. So, yeah, I, I would like to see them change that as well. Talking up South Carolina football, we got Chris Phillips here from the Spurs Up show. 
Got to catch him and the rest of the crew there talking up South Carolina, the SEC, and whatever they get into these days when there's, hey, we'll say it, nothing to talk about necessarily. But that's when, like Chris was telling me before we started to record here, sometimes the best conversations come from those situations. And we're going to have official visits and all sorts of recruiting coming up here pretty soon.